Hey guys, Rob from Infinite Combo here with a new video series called 15 Hours In. So, doing first impressions videos for RPGs is a little difficult, so I decided that after about 15 hours I could do a quick video on it because by then I should be acclimated with the game and, you know, systems and characters will be a little clearer and um, going to be honest with a lot of RPGs recently I've kind of played for an hour or two and just the game never really pulled me in and then I end up going back to it months sometimes years later and I end up getting hooked and the same thing happened with Mass Effect Andromeda I used EA Access to play the early access version of the game and played all the way to the EOS vault which is as far as the early access would let you play um, got the game when it came out, finished that, finished the EOS vault, and just kind of lost interest. And then I decided a few weeks ago to come back to it. I had a little bit of free time. Understatement. And, of course, now as I'm recording this narration and getting this video ready to show... Uh, I have actually finished Mass Effect Andromeda uh, with 91 total percent completion after I did some stuff post main quest uh, with about 50 hours on the game. So, does it live up to the hype? Is it bad? If anyone's kind of read reviews or talked about Mass Effect and social media, there's always been this kind of, uh, this game's alright, but the facial animations are so bad, and it doesn't live up to the original trilogy, and, well, I don't know about that, and I think it can come down to nostalgia glasses sometimes, because uh, after finishing Andromeda, I decided that you know, I only played Mass Effect 3 once. I played the first two plenty of times. A lot of times. And I only, fin I only finished 3 once. I never went and did all the DLC like I did with the other games. Um, so I decided to boot it up and do a new playthrough. And I have to say, it, the, the gameplay was very, very improved in Andromeda. So it was it was tough to get used to going back to Mass Effect 3's kind of stiff movement and now that where there was a lot of things that I did like about Mass Effect 3's combat that Andromeda kind of skipped like having an actual cover system instead of just walking up to something you can hide behind and you automatically take cover. Uh, this sort of like tactile feel to having an actual like get into cover button and um, being able to do multiple movements around and out of cover. Um, and of course, I'm a big Gears of War fan, so that kind of stems from that too. But um, that is one thing I did like about Mass Effect 3's combat better. Um, also, the ability to use all of your powers through the power wheel um, while being able to hot button a couple of them was definitely welcome. As well, it was probably one of the things that I disliked the most about Mass Effect Andromeda is being limited to three abilities. I can kind of see why, because they kind of, instead of putting you into a shell of one class, you're able to kind of do whatever you want. If you want to start the game as a soldier and be weapons focused and then, you know, mid, mid playthrough switch to a vanguard or switch to a sentinel or anything really um, you can do it because you can unlock any powers at any time as long as you have the skill points to do so and I started as a soldier which is the way I played Mass Effect 1 through 3 originally and then decided to go into biotics and, and be a vanguard um, and I have to say I had a lot of fun playing as a biotic um, something that I didn't really do in the original Mass Effect games so I kind of just played it like a shooter with RPG elements which I kind of regret doing, but, um, anyways, 
I have to say, this game is way, way better than a lot of the reviewers kind of make it out to be. A lot of the critics um, kind of make it out to be. And I know it's, it's different. Um, the way they, the whole game plays, everything is really different from old Mass Effect. Um, it's a lot more open with, you know, the planets being really large. Um, and you don't get, you know, you get a section that tells you what the storyline missions are, but there's just so much more to do. It can get a little overwhelming at times, but I have to say, I mean, the gameplay changes alone make this game a lot more enjoyable to play. Um, after, you know, after about 15, 20 hours with the characters, characters are great. Um. I really like the squad. Um, Ryder is definitely definitely a little different from Shepard um, as far as personality and everything. Um, definitely jokes around a lot more. But as far as really everything with this game goes, I have to say like it's definitely an improvement. And um, you know, there's been some rumors recently that due to Mass Effect. Andromeda's reaction from a lot of fans that the series is going to get shelved. I really hope those rumors aren't true. Um, because they definitely set up the ending of this for a sequel, and it'll be really disappointing if they don't deliver and they just kind of leave this game on a whim with no real ending that you could really wrap up the series with. And... I mean, while, Ma while the original Mass Effect kind of sets up that it's going to be at least, you know, more than one game, the ending definitely could have just been the ending. It could have been a self-contained package. And I feel like just the ending of this game really left it open that it was going to be... There was going to be a sequel for it, so... I personally will be disappointed if there is no sequel. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, this game definitely is kind of getting hit hard with its reviews and just the way people feel about it. And I don't, I can't tell, you know, it's hard to tell whether. You know, someone's kind of in the same position as me, put tons and tons and tons of hours into the previous games and, you know, just kind of wanted another of that same game. Um, and I think I probably felt the same way when I played this for the first time. I was like, I was like, oh, you can jump around and this just feels too different for me. And it definitely took a little while for me to kind of warm up to this game, but once I really got into the meat of this game it turned out really good and um, it really made me want to go back and replay the old Mass Effect games that I haven't played in a while. I mean the last time I played Mass Effect was when I finished Mass Effect 3 and that was only maybe a week after the original, uh, after Mass Effect 3 originally came out um, so it's been a long time since I've really played through these games um but that's kind of something to say where a lot of people were really disappointed about this game that, you know, finish playing through and finishing this game, like, made me want to go back and replay the old ones again. And not because I didn't like this game, but because I enjoyed this game so much that I wanted to go back and replay the old ones. And uh, I feel like with the original ending of Mass Effect 3, I, that kind of turned me off of playing through Mass Effect 3 a second time and so after playing this game after all of its negative reception and all these reports of how the team was very understaffed and not treated very well really made me have a little more respect for what kind of turned out with this game um yes it's it's got bugs it's got glitches there was a quest I was not unable to finish because I couldn't figure out who I was supposed to talk to. Um, I would 
highlight the quest and track it and it's supposed to give you a nav point to go to and no nav point would appear I know you're supposed to talk to somebody on the Nexus I talk I went around to try to talk to everybody and there was just nobody you could talk to to finish this quest um, camera angles can get a little janky um, supposedly the face animations were really bad I don't know if it's just because they had updated the game a few times since it originally came out I didn't notice any facial animation issues I mean the characters have Bioware face it's a thing they always look a little stiff they always look a little you know not quite right um, you know, you can see a little bit of jumpiness with the character models. Sometimes in between dialogue choices, where you'll choose a dialogue choice and they'll shift ever slightly, like instantly with no actual like fluid movement. And you can even see a couple examples in the video, like right now during the speaking part during Jal's loyalty mission. Um, it, it happens. I mean, people complained about that being a big issue in this game. But I, I was playing Mass Effect 3 yesterday, and during a conversation with Ashley while she's in the hospital on the Citadel early in the game, like, every time I make a dialogue choice, like, her body moved, like, her face would move randomly, and, like, with no fluid animation, it was almost like it was, like, a jittery jump, and the camera angles were bad, and, like, the way she moved her neck, it looked like her neck was broken, like, people really, really hammered this game for that problem, and Mass Effect 3 had it, and I know Mass Effect 2 had it. Mass Effect 2 had this weird thing where you'd be running through the Normandy, and Shepard would just, like, his head would just look all the way to the left for no reason. It It's just something that happens. It's a minor gameplay bug. It doesn't really... It doesn't really affect the game. It doesn't affect your ability to, to finish it. I can see people's complaints, and they have their right to complain about that stuff. I mean, if it if it's breaking immersion for them, it's breaking immersion for them. To me, it doesn't break the game. It and to be honest, a lot of the like graphics bugs and stuff, a lot of them are just kind of hilarious sometimes. Like I I biotic charge an enemy, and they get caught on something and their body jitters around, or, like, they get ragdolled at lightning speed. And it, it's funny to me, little things like that. And a lot of people will argue that it's not realistic, but you're playing a game where you're cryogenically frozen and sent through dark space to another galaxy. And you're talking about realism. So, anyways, I'm hoping that with a little bit of my commentary here, if you were on the fence with Mass Effect Andromeda or, you know, you wouldn't give it a chance because of what people were saying about it, I hope that I have maybe changed your mind to at least give it a shot. It's, like I said, it's different, but it's a good game. It really is. The characters are, are good. The gameplay is very good. The The combat feels really smooth. The weapons are, are really good. Um, like, the gameplay portion is definitely way better than it was in the original trilogy. And as much as I can find it extremely obnoxious that companies keep re-releasing the same games over and over again. If Bioware were to release a Mass Effect trilogy, but with the gameplay and the combat of Andromeda, I would probably buy it in a heartbeat. Because the combat was so much fun being able to jump around and dash around and just do so much more in combat to kind of dodge enemies and get into enemies' faces really quickly. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, and it's definitely something I would recommend to anyone who has played Mass Effect. Even somebody who has never played Mass Effect. Um, or somebody that didn't like the original trilogies because of whatever X reason. Andromeda's a fresh start. 
new gameplay, new characters, new galaxy. Give it a shot. Um, so like I said, this series generally is going to show uh, games at about the 15 hour mark. And I chose 15 hours. And I was originally going to choose around 30, but um, there are some RPGs that aren't going to even last 30 hours. Um, so I thought the 15 hour mark was good. And like I said, I recorded the, I actually recorded this video at like the 30 hour mark. And I ended up finishing it before I even recorded this. But uh, anyways, guys, check out Mass Effect Andromeda. Let me know what you think of in the comments section. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What were your reasons behind either liking it or not liking it? Do you think I'm an ass for posting Mass Effect content this far after launch, especially on what people are now trying to say is a dead franchise? Let us know. Anyways, like, share, subscribe, and share, and let everyone know, especially us, how you feel about Mass Effect. Until next time, stay infinite. I've watched Ryder make planets habitable.